Hey everybody, I'm Lex from PDQ.com. I'm going to take you through the different types of collections we have. Now, we've got three. We've got pre-built collections in our collection library that we maintain. And the great thing about that is we maintain them so you don't have to. So, for example, let's go look at internet browsers. We've got a collection of machines that have Chrome old, machines that have got the latest version of Chrome on it, and then machines that just have Chrome. Okay? These are great templates. All you have to do to look at them is double click on them. They will open up and you will see the filters. Okay. Uh, these are variables that we maintain. So if you hover, you'll get to see what those are. If you get a chance, take a look at those. But let me take you through the other two types of collections which you build. Okay. So the other types would be a static collection. And basically, a static collection, let's say these are my test machines, right? Test computers. These are the ones I want to send stuff out to, and they're the ones I hand pick. So I'll hand pick, uh, let's say, Alan Rails, Beth, and then Counselor Ricks. Okay. Now, if you look at the test computer, I statically added those guys. They're going to be there until I take care of them and move them or add something else to it. Hence the name, a static collection. Now, more importantly, if you click on a new dynamic collection, this is going to be a collection that will change with the computers and the uh, filters that you put on it. So we're going to do one called Notepad++. And it's plus plus, it's not times times. Now, <clears throat> this collection already exists, but I'm going to show you how to build this. So we want machines that have an application where the name contains Notepad++. Now, it is important that you put in the proper um, value here. If your value is wrong, you're going to get the wrong um, results. So these machines, oh, look, check this out, Beth. If I go and look at Beth under Applications, there's Notepad++. And I happen to know right now the latest version is 7.5.6. So let's go and alter this Notepad++, or well, why don't we just duplicate it, and we'll make a new Notepad++ collection. And we'll call this Notepad++ Latest, okay, for the latest version. So we're going to add another filter, and it's going to be application version. And you're going to do a version comparison here when you do versions, okay, is equals, and we'll put 7.5.6. And now when I save this, our latest is going to go from 18 down to these machines right here, which have the latest. So if I just grab million ants, you'll see Notepad Plus 756. So let's do one more. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to duplicate this one once again. And we're going to say, we're going to go in and change this to Notepad Plus Plus Old. And that'll be for an old version. And we'll get rid of that too. And then we're going to do the version is lower than 756 and this should give us any of the machines that have an older version of notepad plus plus give that an okay and there we go guinness microverse squanchy let's take a look at snuffles should be less than 7.5.3 there you go it's an older version of notepad plus plus so that's how you build a dynamic collection again you know you're putting the filters in for the machines that you want. We're looking for application name contains, and we're looking for versions, okay? And when you do a version comparison, make sure you use the version comparisons in there, okay? And that's it. That's how you make uh, dynamic static collections. And again, check out the collection library. It's a great template if you want to learn how to build other collections. Thanks for watching. I'm Lance.